friends. Herpetologists and veterinarians everywhere need to stay on top of current emerging diseases to make sure that they keep our pets happy and healthy. I am a certified vet tech and I am the animal care manager here at Zen Habitats. And in this position, I need to stay on top of keeping my pets and Zen Habitats ambassador pets happy and healthy. One way I do this is by attending veterinary conferences. So this past summer, I attended this amazing veterinary conference that was geared towards exotic pets. And I learned so much and I can't wait to share it with you. In this amazing lecture I attended, we went over current and emerging reptile diseases and why they are important. Some of these are not new diseases, but the infectious agent that causes them is potentially new. So I want to talk about a few different ones. One will be a fungus, another will be a parasite, and the last one will be bacterial. The first one I want to go over is colonian amidomycosis, which is a fancy way of saying a turtle fungal infection. <laughs> The particular species of fungus that cause these infections is called Amidomyces testivorans. And this presented with cyst-like formations on the shells of free-ranging and captive aquatic turtles. In these particular turtles, the signs of this infection included the cyst growths on the shell. So they had tissue morphology changes as well as um, acute inflammation in the area as well as as, um, potential bone death for very severe infections. In some cases, it wasn't completely obvious that the turtles were going through this infection and other diagnostics were needed to figure it out, such as x-rays. This fungus is very new and was only identified in 2019. And like I said, it affected many different species of free-ranging and captive aquatic turtles, including some of my favorite. Alligator snapping turtles, spiny soft-shell turtles, mata mata turtles, and yellow-spotted river turtles. There's still much more research that needs to be done on amidomyces to understand its true infectious agents and how it spreads to other turtles. The next disease I want to go over is respiratory and gastrointestinal strongyloidiasis. That's a tough one. In colubrid snakes. <laughs> Strongyloids are a type of roundworm, and many different pet species can be affected by roundworm infection, and that does not include our snakes. Hey guys, Casey here. I was so excited to make this video that I accidentally said the wrong word. This was supposed to say, does not exclude our snakes. Our snakes can also suffer from these roundworm infections. So, colubrid snakes, for those who are unfamiliar, include our garter snakes, corn snakes, milk snakes, rat snakes, etc. For example, many snakes have lung worms that don't show any disease or any negative effects to the snake, but they are there. The veterinarian holding this lecture gave us a case study of a large colubrid breeding facility that had a super infection of these strongyloides. Many of these snakes presented with respiratory distress, stomatitis or mouth rot, facial deformities, anorexia, and poor body condition. Upon necropsy, which is essentially the equivalent of an autopsy for animals, many, many roundworms were found in the oral cavities, in the lungs, and in the entire gastrointestinal tract. Researchers were able to pinpoint that these roundworms belong to the genus of Rabidia and Strongyloids. The last disease I want to go over is enterococcosis in lizards. Enterococci is a bacteria that is a normal gut bacteria found in most animals, but it can cause nasty infections when it goes to other parts of the body. In 2014, multi-systemic infections were observed in the critically endangered Lister's geckos from Christmas Island. This included mild inflammation and masses on the skin and internal organs. In 2019, in western and central Florida, brown anoles, who are invasive, were reported to have very similar signs of infection. Anoles in Florida 
presented with masses on their heads and body, as well as a very poor body condition. On necropsy, they were able to determine that it was an enterococci species of bacteria causing these infections. Enterococcus infections have been affecting reptiles for years, but what we're trying to now figure out, is it a sporadic thing, or is this spreading worldwide between different reptile species? Thank you so much for watching. This video isn't to scare you, but it is just to make you aware of the current and emerging reptile diseases that are currently out there. For more content like this, make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel as well as our other social media platforms. Thank you so much for watching again.